Okay, we are on chapter four. And as you see, it says angles and triangles. So we're gonna actually talk about five different types of triangles today. And we're gonna do some things with the triangles, find some mis missing uh, measurements, missing angles, solve for X like we've been doing. All right, really the rest of geometry, you're gonna, they're gonna give you pictures, they're gonna give you angles and sides and things, and they're gonna put X in there, like three X plus one equals whatever. And you're going to have to do some algebra. You have to solve for X, plug it back in. This kind of stuff that we've done in the past, we're going to continue to do that same kind of thing. We're just going to do it with different types of figures. Okay, we mentioned this yesterday. I'm going to go over it again. So it's being recorded so we can um, have it down for posterity's sake. So here's three of them. So one is an acute triangle. The other is a right triangle, which we kind of mentioned yesterday a little bit. Another one is an obtuse triangle, which we mentioned. Okay, and we'll deal with the other three after we get, the, get these done. Okay. So these are triangles. Let me do this. Let me grab one of these triangles. There we go. Let's use this one. There we go. And let's go back up to here. And whoops, did I not paste it? Thought I copied it. Let's try this again. Copy, paste, there it is. Okay. Let's try it one more time. All right. Uh, see if they have a pass. If they don't have a pass, tell them I said to go to the office. Who's on it? All four of you are on it? Yeah. People mess up at class. Yeah. All right, here we go. So now I've got this triangle. Let's make it look a little different like this. Let's take a look at this triangle right here. We talked about this yesterday. Nico, face front, please. We talked about this triangle yesterday. And look at all three of these angles right here. Let's make it just a little bit bigger so it's a little easier to see. About right there. All right, so let's take a look at all three of these angles. What types of angles? We talked about this yesterday, so you should know it right away. What kind of angles are all three of these right here? They're acute angles. They're less than 90 degrees. They can come in. Okay, they are less than 90 degrees. So if you have a triangle, thank you, with three acute angles, what kind of a triangle do you call it? An acute triangle, that's right. Okay, so these right here, all three of these are from the angles in the triangle. We're going to talk about three other triangles. I think I said five triangles before. Sorry, there's six of them. But these three, we, we're going to describe them by their angles. Okay, so I say, what kind of a triangle is this? by its angles, all right? So that means you look at all three angles. What are they? They're all acute, so it's an acute triangle. Make sense? And acute angle means it's less than 90 degrees, all right? So let's do another one. Uh, I got, yeah, I got me a right triangle right here, so let's copy that. Let's put this right here. Let's just make it a little bit bigger so we can see it. There we go. And if I could grab this thing, there we go. Do you have a pass? From now on, you're not going to come in my room when the, after the bell rings without a pass. So don't even, so don't even try. So don't even try. Rings at one o'clock. Okay, here we go. It was a simple statement. Didn't require all this talking. It was a simple little statement, so I don't need anything else. So here we go. We've got a triangle. I put that little box there. What does that little box mean? It means it's 90 degrees, okay? And so I have a triangle with a 90 degree angle, so guess what we call this triangle? 
It's a right triangle. So I call this a right triangle. Can you have more than one 90 degree angle in a triangle? No, you cannot, okay? Because if you had, let's say, if you had more than one, let's say two. Let's say you had two 90 degree angles inside that triangle. Is there any way you could actually make a triangle out of it? There's not, because look, if this side and this side were 90 degrees, and let's say this side went over here 90 degrees, there's no way that you're gonna be able to connect them to get a triangle out of it, okay? So you can only have one 90 degree angle. So an acute triangle has all three acute angles. I should write that down, okay? So an acute triangle, all three angles are acute. On a triangle, we have how many right angles in a right triangle? We just have one, that's right. We just have one right angle in a right triangle. What about an obtuse triangle? We talked about this yesterday. Let me find me a nice obtuse triangle. I think this is obtuse. Yeah, this one, let's use this one. And let's just put it right here. Again, we'll just make it a little bit bigger, about like that. This angle almost looks like it's 90 degrees. Let's say it's bigger than 90, okay? Let's say that angle right there is bigger than 90 degrees. So what kind of an angle is it if it's bigger than 90 degrees? It's an obtuse angle. But what are the other two angles? And we could say the same thing for this right triangle. What, are the, what kind of angles is this angle and this angle right here? They're acute. When you have a right triangle, the other two have to be less than 90. Would you agree? All right, so they have to be acute. So on a right triangle, you have one acute angle, and the other two have to be acute angles. With me? This one right here, that's obtuse. Kind of looks right, but maybe it's a little bit wider. We'll call that obtuse, okay? That's an obtuse angle. So what must be true about the other two angles then? They have to be acute, all right? But on an acute triangle, all three of them are acute. Make sense? All righty. So we just classified them. Oh, let's write this down since we've got this now. So how many obtuse angles in a obtuse triangle? We have one obtuse, and you can't have any more. All right, so one obtuse angle. You cannot have more than one right angle. You can't have more than one obtuse angle if you're gonna have it in a triangle, okay? But you can have all three acute, and that's fine. Um, Let's talk about this right now. It's not, they don't talk about this till the next three triangles, but we talked about this yesterday. What if I took angle one, what if I took angle one, angle two, and angle three? This does not mean it's one degree, it doesn't mean it's two degrees, it doesn't mean it's three degrees. We just, it's just how I name the angle, okay? Because you can name angles with numbers, sometimes that's even easier than using letters. So um, let's just call this angle one, two, and three. What must be true about if you add it up, one, two, and three? We talked about this yesterday. They add up to 180, exactly right, okay? So angles one, two, and three add up to 180. Is that just on an acute triangle? It's on all triangles, doesn't matter what kind of triangle, okay? It could be acute, it could be right, it could be obtuse. All three angles will always add up to 180 degrees. Everybody understand that? Okay, I wasn't gonna do that, but I'm this, but I'm going to do it right now. So let's actually take this triangle. I'll tell you what, let's just do this. I don't know if you can handle this or not, but let's see if you can. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw, let's make it red. And let's see if I can, it didn't hit quite, but I can fix it. Let's put this right here. Now, what does that red line right there look like compared to this bottom part of this triangle? It looks like they're what? Parallel to each other, exactly. Okay, so let's do a different color. So what I did, I purposely drew a line up here that's parallel to this line. We've learned, we just took a test on stuff with parallel lines, didn't we? We have alternate interior angles, corresponding angles, all that kind of stuff, okay? So we're gonna use that. We're gonna use that to show you that angles one, two, and three add up to what? 180. So let's put this in here. 
I'll use the numbers. This is in the book. One, two, and three. Everybody look here. Here's one, two, and three. Everybody see this? Now what I'm also going to do is I'm going to put a couple other angles in here, four and five. Let's everybody watch. What I'm doing right now is I'm showing you a proof. No, you're staying in here. What? I am recording. So watch. Yes. So one, two, and three. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to show that angles one, two, and three add up to 180. Everybody with me on that? What have we learned in the past about 180 degrees? We learned that something else added up to 180. Do you remember what that was? A straight line, exactly. Okay. We don't really have to say straight line because every line is straight. Okay. But for the sake of ease, we'll say that. So look at this right here. Let's just call this, I don't know, we went up to five. Let's call this six and seven. What could I say right now about angle six and seven? I could say angle six plus angle seven equals what? 180. And we know that because we know that a straight line is 180, right? Those two angles, six and seven, make up a straight line. You're making it very difficult. Every time I say something, somebody's got to have a remark. And it's right in the middle of me talking, too. See, I don't need this. I'm trying to teach you something. Please. Thank you. It's exactly what was going through my head. I just didn't want to say it, okay? But please. Goodness. Please help me. Please help me. <laughs> Guess I was wrong. I guess you can't handle this. <laughs> it's like it's like kindergarten in here. <sighs> All right. Are we going to listen now? So any angles, it doesn't have to be just two angles. You could have more than two angles that form a straight line, couldn't you? Watch. I could have an angle like this, okay? And I could say angle 6, 7, and 8 all form a straight line. I could keep doing this forever. As long as it makes a straight line, all those angles add up to 180. Agree? All right. Now what we're going to do, what? Exactly right. And that's exactly what we're getting at, okay? Thanks for actually asking a question that pertains to what we're talking about. I do appreciate it. So Rosalind said this, does that mean that 4, 2, and 5 add up to 180? They absolutely do, right? Because they all form that red line, that straight line right there. Well, let's, let's talk about this. The reason I put this red line right here was first to show you that these three angles form a straight line, okay? But I made it parallel. Now, why in the world did I make them parallel to each other? Because of the stuff that we learned before. Do you remember alternate interior angles? Okay, so watch what we have. This may not look quite as familiar like we're used to seeing it like this, aren't we? The parallel lines. But we have that here, don't we? We got this red line up here. We got this one down here. And what about this line right here? That's a transversal, isn't it? Doesn't that cross? It's like this, isn't it? Okay, it's like this. So with that said, right? I mean, that keeps going out like this and it keeps going down like this. So what do you think that we know, Leona? The transversal is this line right here. That's the transversal, okay? It just, it just stops. It just doesn't keep going. Like, I could have kept it going like this. Do you see that? And I could have kept this one going like that. Now it looks like a transversal, doesn't it? Okay. But I'm just going to keep it like that. So we got two parallel lines, just like up here. We got two parallel lines cut by a transversal. Look at angle four. Angle four is like um, this angle right here, isn't it? Do you see it? Here's the one going across. Here's the transversal, right? It's down there. What is angle one over here? Angle one is from the transversal to that bottom parallel line. You see it? That one right there. 
So what's true about angle one and angle four? They're equal to each other because they are, give me the name. I said it like three times already today. Alternate interior angles. So watch, so angle one, so angle one and angle four are equal to each other because they're alternate exterior angle. Or now he got me saying exterior. They're alternate interior angles. Yes. No, one and three don't form a straight line. Well, just just hang with me. Hang with me. Okay, I'm getting somewhere. I'm getting somewhere with this. I want you to watch. This is actually what we're doing. I'm not going to write down all the steps, but what we're doing right now is we're actually doing a proof. You've heard me say that word before, haven't you? This year I decided I'm not going to have you guys do proofs. And believe me, if you've done proofs before, you would be very, very thankful that I'm not having you do proofs. Okay? Shh. Kind of. So I'm just saying, just be grateful that I'm not making you do proofs. Okay? If you talk to your parents, if they remember anything from geometry, if you ask them, what was the worst part about doing geometry? My guess is that 99% of your parents would say doing the proofs. Uh, almost everybody says that. And I'm not making you do proofs, but, but what I'm doing right now is basically a proof. I'm, not just, I'm just not showing all the little steps, okay? But I want to show you how to prove that angles 1, 2, and 3 add up to 180. So that's what I'm trying to show right now. But you do know this. You do know that angle, mm, let's do it like this. Angle 4 plus angle 2 plus angle 5. What do you know about those angles? You do know that they add up to 180, don't you? Because they form a straight line. And we've talked about before, if angles form a straight line, then a straight line is 180 degrees. Would you agree with that right now? So now watch this. We just said that angle 1 and angle 4 are equal to each other. Correct? So let's come down here to this little equation. Instead of writing, why did I put 4 then an angle? I'm losing my mind. Angle 4. That's better. So watch this. Come on, this is... To me, anyway, I like this because you were probably told that a triangle had 180 degrees. Yesterday I did that little thing with the paper, right? And I kind of showed you that it did form a straight line. But this is more of a formal kind of a thing, all right? So just watch what we do here. So angle 1 and 4 are exactly the same. So instead of writing angle 4 here, what could I write? Angle 1, okay? Now angle 2 I'm not going to do anything with. I'm just going to write down plus angle 2. Now what else do you think is equal? Five and three, that's right, because look, five and three are also alternate interior angles. It's a different transversal this time, though, isn't it? It's like this. It's like you got two parallel lines, and this is your transversal. You just don't see it extended, right? So it looks a little different. It doesn't look like your normal, everyday transversal like we've been used to, but that's what it is. And where is angle five? That's right there. Where's angle three? It's between the transversal and that bottom parallel line. It's that one right there. So these two are equal, so that means three and five are equal. So instead of writing angle five, what could I replace it with? Angle what? Three, because three and five are equal. Now, look what we just did. We just proved that angles one, two, and three add up to 180 degrees. Okay, that's basically the proof. There are some steps in there that we kind of skipped. We just talked about it. I didn't write them down. But really, basically, that is a proof. We just showed that the uh, angles of a triangle are add up to be 180 degrees. All right? I didn't just tell you. I showed you why it's true. Leanna. Come on. <laughs> now you don't. You don't have to prove they're 180 because we have, we've already established in the past by definition that angles that make up a straight line is 180 degrees. So we've already established that by definition that any angles that form that add up together to form a straight line are always 180 degrees. So we've already 
we've already discussed that. We didn't have to prove it. It's just a definition, okay? But from that, we don't have a definition that says the angles add up to 180 degrees. We just proved it. We just proved that all three angles add up to 180. So if you have a teacher later on says, do you know why the angles add up to 180? Like, you'll probably say, I have no idea, but I remember Mr. Hamrick blabbed on and on about it. And he was, he was excited about it, but I didn't care less about it. <laughs> All right, so, so there you go. So that's, so that's why the angles add up to 180 degrees. I think it's kind of interesting. I'm not going to put that on a quiz or a test as far as proving it, okay? But you will need to know. I promise you, you will need to know that all three angles add up to 180 degrees because you're going to have to do some stuff with it. I mean, you could just see some very easy stuff that you could do. I mean, what if I said, let's not use one, two, and three. What if I said that this was 70 and this was 80? I know they don't look like 70 and 80. What would this angle right here be? If this was 70 and this was 80, what would this angle up here have to be? I should have made this one 80, tell you the truth, but that's all right. So what's 70 and 80? What's seven plus eight? That's 150. So what's this angle right here gonna be? It's gotta be 30, make sense? Okay, but guess what else they're gonna do? They're just gonna, not, they're just not gonna put regular numbers in here. They're gonna put, like what? Like X plus, I don't know. I, I'm not even gonna be able to make one up to make it work, but you know, this could be like X plus three. This could be three X minus two. You follow me on that? And then they'll say, okay, what's this angle right here? Right? So you add them up, take them away from 180. You got to do some algebra. We'll do that in a few minutes. Okay. Not right now. So we talked about three triangles according to their angles. Now what we're going to do is talk about three triangles according to their sides. All right. The first one, let's see, do I have a triangle? Yeah, that's probably one right there. So let's use that one. That's so why I have those triangles over there so I could use them. Situations like this. Um, I'm just going to do like that. And let's make it so you can see it. There we go. Now we're not talking about the angles this time. Okay, we're not talking about the angles. All right, we're just talking about the sides. Okay, what I'm going to do, um, I don't know, let's say that that was three, that was seven, and this was nine. Okay. I don't know what they are. I didn't measure them. Just making numbers up. Okay. Everybody with me so far? What's true about all three of those angles? Are they equal? Are they, are two of them equal? Are none of them equal? What? No, not, none of them are equal. Exactly. That's what I wanted to hear. None of them are equal to each other. Listen, that would be nice. So, None of the sides are equal, so we have a name for this. Okay, we're not talking about it being obtuse or acute or right or anything like that. I don't care about the angles. I just care about the lengths of the sides right now, okay? So none of the sides are equal to each other. We have a name for it, and I'll just put it right there. In the, it's a weird name, but it's called scalene, all right? Scalene triangle. What does a scalene triangle mean? It means that none of the sides are equal to each other, okay? I'll give, I'll give you that in a minute. We're going to get to that. So the first triangle is a scalene triangle. The first triangle is called a scalene triangle, which means none of the sides are equal. So I'm going to put no sides are equal. Okay, so put that in your notes somewhere. Now, we have another type of triangle. Let me see if I can, yes, I can use this. And let's put this here. Let's make it look like this. Oops. There we go. All right. What if I had this? What if that was three and this was seven and this was seven? Now, tell me something about the sides. I don't care about the angles, just about the sides. Two of them are equal to each other. So we actually have a name for that. We have a name for a triangle when two of the sides are equal to each other. Now, technically, 
the definition is at least two of the sides are equal. Do we have at least two of the sides equal here? What does that also mean? If I said at least two of the sides, you could have two or, and how many sides do we have in a triangle? So if I have two sides equal or three sides equal, right. Okay, we could use this name. Well, he was sleeping the whole time until just now. So some of you other guys talked way more than he has so far. So, But I got my eye on him. Don't worry. So when you have two sides or more equal to each other, I'll write it up here. Isosceles. You've probably heard that before. This is an isosceles triangle. Now, let's spell it correctly. Believe me, I've seen some crazy spellings with isosceles. It's not that hard if you just if you look at it and you see it. Look, it starts with isos, I-S-O-S. So write that down. And then celes, C-E-L-E-S. So think of it as those two words, isos and then celes, C-E-L-E-S. I don't know, all kinds of ways. So usually they don't have the C in there or they mix up the C and the S or something like that or they don't put the other E on there. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Just don't... Just don't spell it wrong. Spell it right. I won't take off if you spell it wrong, but just make, you know, try to spell things right. So that's an isosceles triangle. Let's do another one, a third one. I said we're going to have three according to their angles and three according to their sides. So let's take this, and I'm going to keep it the same exact shape. Now, what do you think is true about all three sides of this triangle? Yeah, so let's call that five. That's five. What would this be? Five, if they're all equal to each other. Now, technically, we could call this an isosceles triangle, but most people don't, okay? Usually, when people talk about an isosceles triangle, they only talk about a triangle with only two sides equal, okay? But if you look at the technical definition, Wayne, I need you to sit outside for a minute until I decide that you can come back in. So just sit out there, just sit up against the wall. Don't leave. If I look out the door, I need to see you sitting. I want you right out front of that door so when I look through that window, I can see you. Do it quickly. Do it quickly, right now. Leave your stuff here. You're not going anywhere. Leave your stuff here. You're just going out, you're just going out in the hallway. You're going out in the hallway. Hurry. Hurry up. You're going the wrong way. You're going the wrong way. Go out the door and sit up against the wall. I'm tired of this. Trevor, you're going to be next, but you're going to be sitting in the office instead of the hallway. So he's getting off lucky. All right, Trent. It's at least two of the sides are equal to each other. Okay, so if you want to write that down, at least two sides are equal. Now this, you could consider this isosceles, but we normally don't. So we... Exactly. So we usually call this equilateral. Lateral means sides. And you see the word equal in there, kind of, right? E-Q-U, anyway, right? That's right. All three sides are equal, so we call it equilateral. Remember, lateral means sides. Equa, right, is, means equal, all right? So equal sides. So all three sides are equal to each other, so we call that equilateral, okay? Everybody with me? then they're not equilateral. Then it would be isosceles. If you have two sides, okay, it's considered isosceles. If only two sides are equal, that would definitely be isosceles. If none of the sides are equal, that's scalene. If all three sides are exactly the same, they're equal to each other, it's equilateral. Now again, I could call this isosceles, but most people don't. All right, Most people would just look at this and say this is equilateral. I don't think they do this in this lesson. Let me take a quick yeah, they do. So let me show you this. This continues with this equilateral thing, quickly. If you wrote, if I wrote this and I said, you know, tell me what kind of triangle this by its sides, if you wrote isosceles, you'd get it right. If you wrote equilateral, you'd get it right. Okay, but if you wrote this as equilateral, that'd be wrong. Okay, so this would be isosceles, this would be isosceles, but again, most of the time, 
we don't consider this isosceles, okay? We would just say it's equilateral. Make sense? Okay. I don't know why they put the at least thing in there, but they do. Every single book does. So um, we have to consider that. Let me tell you something about this as well. Um, nah, I'll save this for another time. Or No, nah, I was going to do something else, but let's just stick with this. When you have all three sides equal to each other, is this in here? Let's see. No, we got that. We got that equal. Yeah, let's do this. If all three sides are equal to each other, that's also going to mean that all three angles are going to equal each other as well. Okay? So if it's equilateral, what, Jason? No, stay there. So if this is equilateral, we have, I, I don't know, they don't say it right here, but I'm just telling you, okay, that all three side, or all three angles are going to be equal to each other as well. Okay, that's only true when it's equilateral. When it's equilateral, that means all three angles are going to be equal to each other, okay? So what do you think we'll call that by the angles? We'll say that this, if all three angles are equal, we'll call it equal what? Angular, good. It's not that big. Equal, it just means equal, right? And then angle, right? We just put angular, right? That makes sense, right? Just define, it just describes the angle. But it's equal angular. So if it's equilateral, it will always be equal angular. Everybody got it? So if all three sides are equal to each other, that means that all three angles are going to equal each other. Yes? I'm going to say label it by its sides or label it by its angles. If I say label it by its sides, what would you call this? Equilateral. If I said label this by its angles, you would say equiangular. Now, it's also acute. You could say acute as well, couldn't you? But it's also equiangular and it's acute. Now, let's really think a little bit here. Just from this information. I don't even care if this is a five. The five has nothing to do with it. But just this information right here, in fact, let's just get rid of the fives just so that it doesn't confuse you. I could tell you just from this picture on an equiangular triangle, I could tell you how many degrees that all three of these angles are. And you should be able to figure it out. Think about it. What do they add up to be? They add up to be 180. And if they're all exactly the same, then what do you do? You divide it by three. So what's 180 divided by three? It's 60 degrees. That means that every single angle in here is 60 degrees. So that's kind of interesting too, isn't it? That I didn't know anything about this except that all three angles were equal to each other. Okay, if all three angles are equal, then you just take the 180, divide it evenly by three, right? and you've got 60 degrees. So every angle in here is 60 degrees. So I could very easily ask you that, okay? I could have put an X right here and just said, this is an equal angular triangle. How many, you know, what is angle X? And you would say, what? 60 degrees. You with me on that? That's not so bad, is it? Let's see what else. All right, let's do an example. Okay, we got like 10 minutes left, so we got plenty of time. So I'm looking at the example on page uh, 150. Okay, if you want to look at the picture, if I don't draw it exactly like they do, my angles may not be as perfect, but I'll try to make it look pretty close. And then connect from here to here. And then let's see, we got another one about here to here. Does that look like the example in the book? Yeah, that's a one, we'll call that two. Does that mean it's one degree and two degrees? No, it's just how we name the angle, okay? This is angle one, see this angle right here? That's angle one, this one right here is angle two, this one's angle three, and they do, I'll tell you what, I'll do this in a different color. They do tell you some of the other angles though. They tell you this is 36 degrees, they tell you this is 60 degrees, and they tell you this is 45 degrees. 45 degrees. And what do you think they're going to ask you? To find what? One, two, and three. Exactly right. 
All right, so this is the information they give you. That's all they tell you. And they ask you to find angle one, angle two, and angle three. So let's do it. Where are you going to start? Let's do angle one first. Okay, not just because it's angle one, but because look, do you see this little triangle right here? The 36, the one, and the 60. Do you see that one? Okay, I know two of my three angles. So I should be able to find that third angle, shouldn't I? So how do I do that? Trent? Exactly. Let's add these up. 36 and 60. What's that? 96. So these two add up to 96. How do I find out what's left over? That's right. Take it away from 180, correct? So what's that? 7, that's a 10, that's a 4, that's an 8. 84 degrees, is that right? So angle 1, I'll put it in red so we know we solve for it, is 84 degrees. All right, good. So I got one down. Now I got to find the other angles. What's another easy angle that we can find? Now, what says that three and five, three and forty-five would be the same? Yeah, they're both acute, but it doesn't mean like these are both acute, but they're not the same thing, right? So we're not going to do angle three. I'll give you that. We talked about this earlier today, just a few minutes ago, actually. What about angle two? How could I find an angle two? Okay, go ahead, Kenzie. Uh, I wouldn't go there. It's easier than that. It's one simple little thing. Well, one's not 96. One's 84. No, angle one's 84. Right. Exactly. Do you see how one and two make a straight line? Everybody see that? So look, one. everybody's looking at the angles of the triangle, right? But you got to look beyond that too. See that you got that straight line? So angle one and angle two make that straight line. If this is 84, then how do I find the rest of it? 180 minus what? 84. What's that? That looks familiar. 96, right? Because when I went 180 minus 96, I got 84, right? So if I go 180 minus 84, I'm going to get 96. There's another way to do that, kind of easy. And it for, seems for some reason you guys don't like this little um, theorem, but it's one we use a lot. This is an exterior angle to this triangle. Do you see this triangle right here? See how if I extend that side, angle 2 is an exterior angle? What do we know about the exterior angle? It's equal to the sum of the, the two remote interior angles. You've heard me say that many, many times, right? Even on the test corrections, I stood up there and I said, the exterior angle, look at the relationship between the exterior angle and, and the remote interior angles. What's true about the exterior angle? It's equal to the sum of the remote interior angles. So really, all I have to do is do what? Just add up 36 and 60. And what is 36 and 60? It's 96, boom, right there. Exactly the same thing as what we got right there. So you could do it either way. You could look at this and say, oh, take it away from 180. Or you could look at this and say, oh, you know what? That's the exterior angle. That's equal to the sum of the remote interior angles. So I'm going to add these two up, and that's going to be angle 2. And so that's going to be 96. So angle 2, sorry, it's a little messy, is 96 degrees. Now, one more thing to find angle 3. We've done this step before. It's different numbers, but it, we've done this step before. You know this angle, and you know this angle, and you're just trying to find the third one. How do we do that? If you know two angles of a triangle, you can always find the third. That's it. Add them up and subtract them from 180, right? So what's 96 and 45? What's that? That's 11, right? And that's 13, and that's uh, 14, 141. That's not, the angle three is not 141 though. What do we do to that 141? That's it. Take it away from 180. And that's a seven, that's a nine, and a three. So what's angle three? It's 39 degrees. And there you go. 39 degrees. So we've got angle one, we got angle two, and we got angle three. That's the kind of stuff that's going to be on a quiz or a test. Everybody got it? 
I may put some of the stuff where, you know, I say, what kind of triangle it is this? Okay, that's important, but this is really the meat of what we're trying to do, right? This is what geometry is all about, is you get a picture, take the information that they told you, work out the information, do a little math, and come up with an answer. That's geometry right there, okay? Let's do one more. We may not have quite enough time to finish it, but we can get it started at least. I don't know why I kept that red, but let's do this. Let's do this. And at least we'll set it up. We have time to at least set it up. All right. And let's put some stuff in here. Remember I said they're not always going to put just regular numbers in there. What are they, what are they going to put in there eventually? Yeah, X's and stuff. So that's what they're going to do right there. So, oh, look, Christmas colors. I thought I was using yellow, actually. but Okay, so that's 64 degrees, and this is 13X minus 5. 13X minus 5. Actually, we should be able to do this. And I'm going to need to put that in parentheses and put a little degree sign there. Okay? How in the world are we going to solve for X here? Got like two minutes, so you got to think quick. Look, what kind of angle is this? We just finished talking about it. What kind of angle is this angle that's outside, that's on the exterior of the triangle? It's the exterior angle, right? So it's equal to, no, it's equal to the sum. I just finished saying it. The sum of the remote interior angles. Do we know? the remote interior angles. Yeah, it's this one and this one. So what does this equal? This equals these two things being added up, right? That's an important, that's a really important, um, for, or uh, not formula, but theorem that we learned a long time ago. Well, last chapter. So what do we do? We take the 13x minus five. What's that equal to? These two things being added up, right? Five x plus three, what? Plus 64. That's the geometry. The rest is just work, it's just algebra. Okay, this is the geometry that we just did. We turned it from this picture into this equation. Now let's do the math super quick. So uh, let's do this first. Um, add like terms, always add like terms first. So what's this gonna be? Hang on just a second, let's finish this up. What's this gonna be? Subtract a five X, subtract a five X, add a five, add a five, and then we, what's that? 8x equals, what's that? 72? How about 72? Okay, divide by 8. Divide by 8. So x is 9. Now, once we know x, what's this angle right here going to be? 5 times 9, which is 45, plus 3 is 48. Okay? And then you could find this one, and then you could find this one, right? Now listen, you, you were given a, um, whatchamacallit, so we're doing a, let's see, 1 through 16 on lesson 4-1, one. 1 through 16, yep, that's your homework, 151, 152, sure, section 4-1. It's on YouTube. You can always look it on YouTube. 